Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us as we come into your presence to be taught by you. Give us and feed us line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly dividing your word of truth in our hearts and our minds. Father God, put the pieces together, knitly join them together, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we have clear and great understanding of your word. For your word says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So we thank you for giving us your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, your word, your kingdom, us who we are, Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Continue, Father God, to stretch us. Let your light shine on us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And thank you for growing, uh, growing us deeper in you, deeper roots in you, Father God. And thank you for sharing your secrets with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Seeds, S-E-E-D-S. Seeds, Genesis 1, reading verses 11 and 12. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. Ready, read? And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. All right, so let me give you the definition of seed. Definition of seed. The unit, U-N-I-T, the unit of reproduction. The unit of reproduction of a flowering plant. The unit of reproduction of a flowering plant, F-L-O-W-E-R-I-N-G, plant, capable of developing, capable of developing into another, another such plant, capable of developing into another such plant. The unit of reproduction of a flowering plant capable of developing into another such plant. That's the definition of a seed. Well, read it again. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So God spoke and said, let the earth bring forth grass. So God gave up a direct instruction to the earth. And he said to the earth, bring forth grass and yielding and, ye and herb yielding seed. And he also said, bring forth fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind. So God gave a command to the grass and, say, and said, bring forth grass with seed. He said to the, to the trees, bring forth trees with seed. So God gave that direct command to bring forth. And in 11 it says, and the earth brought forth. So just what God told the earth to do, it did. It brought forth seed, it brought forth trees. And they had the fruit that had the same seed. So just what God spoke to the earth to do, the earth did. It brought forth grass and it brought forth trees. And the, word, the exact word that God spoke to the earth, the earth brought forth and did. So when we look at seed, seed can only do what it was commanded to do. 
bring forth after or reproduce after its own kind. So an orange tree cannot bring forth apples. That seed that we get out of an orange, the only thing that seed can bring forth is another orange tree that will produce oranges. So the command was whatever tree goes into the, whatever seed goes into the ground must produce what that seed is. It cannot make me in the ground and say, oh, I don't want to be an orange tree when I grow up. I want to be an apple tree. No, it can only be whatever seed was put into the ground. So when God now gave a command in Genesis 8, let's go to Genesis 8, read in verse 22. Genesis 8, read in verse 22. When you read, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. One more time. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So here is another command that God has given. God is saying as long as this earth remain and you put a seed in the ground, it has to give you a harvest. Seed time and harvest. Not harvest and seed time. A lot of people sitting back, they want harvest without putting seed in the ground. But the order or the Lord of God gave us that seed must go in the ground first. And then the tree of its kind come up. So as long as you put seed in the ground, you're guaranteed a harvest of what seed you planted. You're only guaranteed a, a harvest from the seed that you planted. If you planted a corn kernel, the only thing you can get up that, is, that ground is going to give you is corn from a tree. It cannot give you back that same kernel unless you didn't put it where God tell you to put it. You didn't do to it what God tell you to do to it. So God already gave a command from Genesis to the earth to bring forth grass yield it with seed, trees with seed. And that's exactly what happened. And now he is saying this is after the flood. In Genesis 8, this is after the flood and the water was already dried up. Noah came out of the ark and gave God a, 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 built an altar and gave God a sacrifice. And it was pleasing and acceptable unto God, meaning that the gift that Noah gave to God so pleased God from the smell that he made a promise to man and to every living thing. And he says, while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and coal and heat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So that is guaranteed. Because why? God spoke it. So whenever it comes to seed, we must remember, seed can only bring, off, bring, up, bring forth after its own kind. Seed can only produce if you put it in the ground. If you put it on the window, if you put it inside on the windowsill and the, the environment is not right for it, it will stay right there in that same condition that you place it there year after year, unless it's rotten. Let's go now um, to Genesis, back to Genesis 1, reading verses 26 and 28. Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Twenty-six and 28. So we're skipping 27. I'm going to 28. Ready, read? And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God blessed them and said unto them, 
be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that move it. So this is God now giving another command. He said, let us make man in our own image. So he made Adam, took up one of Adam's rib, and made Eve. So God made man, mankind, in his own image. And he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. So God gave man dominion or control or power over everything on the earth. Everything in the sky, everything in the sea. Because he said have dominion. Dominion means power. Power to direct control. So God gave us control over all the earth. In Psalms it said he gave us power over the works of his hands. So God has given us power over the earth. When we speak, we speak words that will bring fruit. When we speak, we speak words that will bring for fruit. Let's go to Psalm, book of Psalms. Reading Psalm 1. Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Ready, read. Bless is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth in his season. His leaf sh shall not wither, and whatsoever he shall prosper. Amen. So God is saying in verse 1, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And God says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. So God is saying when we do right, when we live a holy, clean life, a righteous life unto God that pleases him, it says we are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season and his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he do shall prosper so we are guaranteed that whatever our hands touch whatever we do in our lives shall prosper provided we're living the, the right the right life that god instructed us to live we will be like a tree now one thing about trees trees bring forth fruit so all of these fruits so far all of these trees god is talking about have brought forth nothing but good fruit, good fruits. So if God look at us as trees, then we bring forth fruits, different types of fruits. What fruit are you bringing forth? Holy Spirit, roll, roll back the curtain. Show us what seeds we're planting and what we're reaping. See, because you cannot get a fruit off of a tree that you cannot get a good fruit off of a bad tree nor can you get vice versa if you plant a good tree that good tree should bring forth good fruit if it's a bad tree that bad tree will bring forth bad fruit it's going to produce after its own kind and so when we sow kindness we're going to reap kindness when we sow good 
we're going to sow good. When we take and spend time in the word of God, getting to know his laws, what we're supposed to do, and how we're supposed to live, and how we're supposed to treat people, then God calls us blessed. And he said we will bring forth fruit in our season. So we get a reward when we do what God tells us to do. We get to enjoy good fruit. We get to enjoy good fruit because we are sowing or planting good seeds. So what, what seed we put in the ground will be determined the fruit that we're going to reap. Some of us, plenty of people out there, catching a, or living a hard life. And they wonder why they're living a hard life. Got to have a good job and wonder why they can't get ahead. Making good money, they wonder why they can't get ahead. But if we're not doing what God tells us to do, then we are definitely sowing bad seeds. The bad seed will keep us out of the will of God. Whereas the good seed will give us blessings that we can enjoy here on the earth. Let's go to Haggai, or Haggai, or Haggai, sorry. Haggai, chapter 1. Haggai, 1, read in verse 6. Haggai, 1, verse 6. Ready, read. Ye have sown much and brought in little. Ye eat, but ye have not. Ye drink, but ye have not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none. And he that earned wages, wages to put in. Amen. One more time. Ye have sown much. And bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none born. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag of holes. So when we don't do what God tells us to do, then it say you earn wages, you can get money. But it says you put them in bags of holes. You eat and you're not full. All of these are signs of someone who's not doing what God tells them to do. So when we live according to the word of God, then we, we, we are full. We get more than enough to be a blessing to many others. And this was given to um, the children of God, some of them, because they were taking care of their own houses, their own homes. And they were not taking care of the house of God. But they were taking care of their own, their own house. They taking care of their own needs and desires. But they were, they were not doing or taking care of God things. And so God said, you go ahead doing what you want to do then. You go ahead and sow plenty, plenty. But you're going to bring in little. You go and earn your wages. But you will definitely put in bags at holes. This is an interesting chapter. But it goes to show you have sown much. So if you're in a position where you see where you're sowing much and you're bringing in little, then you, the thing to do now is go, oh, okay, I repent, show me where is it that, where am I missing the mark? How am I missing it? I have a good salary, I earn wages, but just like I don't have it. Why is it? Go back and find out why is it that you're working so hard and not having anything. It has to be a reason why. Because God already given the earth a command. To bring forth after its own kind. But we must sow. So if we are sowing the right seeds. We should have good fruits. We should have a good harvest. We should be able to live a good, good life. Let's go to Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Reading verse 20. 18, 20. Proverbs 18, 20. 
Ready, read? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the fruits of his lips shall he be filled. One more time. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So, again, we see fruit. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with, and with the increase of his lips shall he be satisfied. These are all good things if you do the right thing. We supposed to, our belly is supposed to be full, supposed to be satisfied, provided we're doing what God tells us to do. And when we read 21, let's read 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever you speak, bring forth fruit. Whether you speak in life, good things, blessings, or you're speaking death, bad things that will bring curses, it's all on us. It's all on us, so we don't have anyone to blame other than us. If things are not working out for you or for me, the first thing we do is, God, show me why is it not. Because according to your word, I'm supposed to be living an abundant life. According to what you've promised, I'm supposed to see good things come. According to your words, everything's supposed to work out in my favor. So why is it that nothing is working in my favor? Why is it the thing so small? Why is it that I so much and bring in little? And if we sit before our God long enough and we are pulling on him to get that answer, he will answer us. But a lot of time is out of ignorance that we don't see change in our lives. We're sowing the wrong seeds. And so therefore, if we're sowing a seed, we're definitely going to reap a harvest. Because as the word of God says, uh, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. So what is it that we're busy sowing? And because we don't know what we're sowing, don't mean we're not sowing. We're always sowing. When we sleep, we're sowing. When we move about, we're sowing. When we talk, we're sowing. We sow plenty when we, when we, when we talk in. A lot of seeds come out of our mouth when we open up. A lot of seeds. Now, whether we know that or not, it's on us. So we cannot walk in ignorance. Sowing time will bring fruit. How are you sowing your time? How are you sowing your time? The times I drive around and you see the little gathering, some people playing dominoes, some playing dominoes, um, and you got some just have discussions going on. And sometimes I pass and I see them, I can go a week, they back there, I can go a week, they still there, I come back a month later, they still there. They're sowing seeds. They're sowing seeds. So how are you spending your time sowing? Spending time reading. Spending time studying. Spending time visiting people. Spending time from place to place when you go to work. You're sowing. You're sowing. When we go to work, we sow, we sow our time for wages. So we, what we do, we are sowing time for wages. So you're sowing. And your seed, that, that seed of time, will give you fruit of wages. So when we sit down doing nothing, we are going to reap the harvest of nothing. Wasting time is serious. And spending time the wrong place is serious. You are spending your time that God has allotted to you. So we have to make sure that we spend our time correctly because we are truly sowing seeds. And according to the word of God, our harvest have to come. A seed in the ground will bring forth a tree and that tree will bring forth fruit. And it will continue. That cycle continues over and over and over. And so when we look at our lives and we're the same place five years, ten years as we were, then we need to start to do so a different kind of seed. Because the seed brings forth of its own kind. So if we're still the same place five years, three years, ten years, fifteen years, then let's now plant a different type of seed so that we can enjoy a different type of harvest. A different type of fruit but in order to see change we must do something different 
in order for us to have a belly full, then we must be of good, that is, then we must now sow good fruits. If we sit back and we murmur and complain and we criticize and we judge, then we're going to have those same fruit, the result of those, those uh, seeds that we sow. We're going to reap from those trees that we planted. And the word of God says, judge not that you be not judge. For the same measure that you use to judge people, it's going to come back to you. So every time we look at people, uh, look at some and we criticize them, whatever we say against them, we're saying it on ourselves. When we criticize them, whatever we criticize them about, it's going to come back to us. Again, words. Words are seed. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So every time we open our mouth, we are planting seeds. And those seeds will come back to us what we plant. In time, we will see that fruit from the seeds that we've sown. And notice, one seed you sow don't give you back one seed. The one seed you sow give you a tree. And so you want to make sure that's a good tree that is going to that will benefit you. And that is not curses that you're placing on yourself. A lot of times we sit back in ignorance and we, we want our children to succeed. We want people to move. And so by speaking that on them, we think that's helping them. Speaking that on them is not helping them. You're sitting on your wasting time because you can die in this house. And you speak that they're going to die in that house wasting time. You need to go there and get a job and get some money because you need to come out of this house. Now that's a good thing, but now how are you saying that? <laughs> Why don't you speak? So we have to learn to speak the right things. And they come out of those because they're tired of the pressure now. And they go and shock up or whoever let them in, they go. And you don't know where you push your child out and send them. And then you're weeping, crying, oh God, watch my child, oh God, protect my child, oh God. You push them out there. So we have to be careful of what we are sowing, what we are saying to our children. And a lot of times we end up hurting them more than we save them by our words. Because yes, we want better for them, but we need to speak in a different tone. We need to speak different words and to see different results. We need to support them. We need to support our family. But when they come and say they're happy about something, you know it ain't good for them, then we say, now God, show me how to tell them this ain't good for them so that they receive it in the right way. So words are important. Words that we speak, they are seed. They are seed. And it said, whatever we sow, we shall reap or eat the fruit thereof. So fruits only come from seeds. So, so what are we sowing every day? Sowing time will bring what we sow. How do you spend your time? If you spend three days, three, sorry, three hours or six hours in, on the phone, on in the, any social media, watching television, what are you getting out of that? What seed? Those seeds you know what you're planting, but what fruit are you going to get? What are you putting in your spirit? What are you putting in your soul when you watch these TV shows or whatever you put in your eyes on social media? What is it that you allow yourself to come into contact with? Your environment. How does your environment help you? What type of environment you're in? All of this make a difference. So when we sow, let's sow the right seed that will produce much fruit. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes 3. Read in verses 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes 3. Not too long. One through eight. Ready, read. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down, and a time to build up, 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Amen. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So there are seasons in our lives. What season are you in? There's a season to plant. And it says there's, a, there's a, a season to pluck up which was planted. So if there are bad seeds that you have sown, then this is the time to pluck them up. Get rid of those bad trees that were planted out of ignorance, out of hate, out of anger, out of resentment, out of revenge. Get rid of those seeds that were planted. The bad seeds that have brought bad fruits. And the only way to cut them down is by repentance because they will continue to produce fruit year after year, season after season. And if they are there in your life and you don't see no progress, let's go back and repent now and say, God, now I plant some, I plant a lot of seeds and they weren't good seeds. I planted hate, anger, bitterness, revenge, and they have truly brought back harvest in my life. Because whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. So if you sow bad things, bad things are going to come back. And they ain't coming back like the one we sowed. So we have to get out the habit of opening our mouth and sowing bad seeds. They are seeds. And if they are bad seeds, they're going to grow into bad trees that will bring much bad fruit. That we have to eat of it because we sow those seeds. And so we can't say, I want this, I want that, I want that. No, you're going to eat them. You will eat them because you plant those seeds. So let us get rid of all the evil trees that we have sown out of ignorance. Ignorance when we, hate, when we hated the brethren or we hated people. Ignorance when we were discouraged and we speak negative words. Ignorance when we spoke death and say, I ain't going to never get from around this place. I ain't going to never move. I ain't going to never do that. Well, if it's not the right place to be, then you've spoken stagnancy over you, non-movement. And some of us spoke it out of anger, trying, trying, and failing, and can't get out. And so we spoke it out of anger. Some people spoke it over you. Oh, you ain't going to never come out here. You're dead in the same place. And so 20 years, 30 years, you're still in the same place. It's because of what was spoken. And so speaking words are very important. How we speak, what we say, what we allow to come out of our mouth. Because truly we're going to be held accountable for them. And as long as we're speaking negative words, that's what Satan wants. He's looking for agreement. He's looking for agreement to keep us backward, to keep us not moving, to keep us out of the will of God, to keep us out of the blessings of God, to keep us always working and not advancing, to keep us always putting money in bags or pockets with holes. That's what he wants. He wants us working hard and achieving nothing or accomplishing nothing. That's what he wants. But that ain't what God has for us. And once we know how to get rid of the bad and only do the good, then we will be like that tree planted by the rivers of water. We will definitely be that tree that bringeth forth fruit in its season and its leaves never get dry. Why? Because the root reached the water, self-sustaining water. And once we learn how to get rid of the seeds, the, the the trees that are in our lives that are, we are eating from, then we start to see life, our life change. Let's go to Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, reading verses 7 and 8. 6, verses 7 and 8. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Ready, read? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap ever. Amen. So this is the word of God. Whatever man sowed, that shall he also reap. And he says, if you sow to your flesh, that means everything what you do is all about you. you, 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 you uh, everything that your flesh say, let's go get, you go and get it. Everything your flesh say, do, you go and do it. It says you're going to reap corruption. See, because the flesh cannot lust after the things of God. It is flesh, and so the only thing it can lust after are the things of the world. And so when you find yourself, oh, I'm go to this concert, oh, I'm go see this movie. If they're not of God, then you are sowing to the flesh. Oh, and try this alcohol, and drink this alcohol, and smoke this weed. You are sowing to the flesh. Oh, I know these people ain't no good for me, but I won't be by myself. I won't be alone. I know there's bad company, but I won't be by myself. I won't be alone. You are sowing to the flesh, and you will reap corruption. Oh, I, I, know, I know this person ain't good for me, but and they always cursing and they always kind on, they always so negative, but I'm going to be by myself. I have no friends. This is my one good friend. How oh, that's a good friend. So you're reaping, you are sowing to the flesh. Therefore, you're going to reap corruption. So we cannot go to Satan's kingdom, play around and then think there's not going to be a, a battle outcome for us. It's going to be a bad outcome for us. That's the word of God. Whatever man sow, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. He's telling us what we're going to reap. So if you, if you have a friendship out there and you know it's not good for you, cut it loose. You're going to reap corruption. It's, it ain't going to never start out that way. Satan ain't never set to, in order for Satan to set some up to fall and for hard fall, he have to come like an angel of light. The word calls him an angel of light. When Satan on the prowl and he trying to hurt somebody and pull somebody, he comes like an angel of light. He make it shine so pretty. And he put, he, he put them, the wickedest person out there. And he shine them a pretty, pretty like a diamond that is hard to resist. And it's only to set up people. And when they take it, then the real person come loose. By this time now, you're in so deep, you ain't know how to get out. This is the reason why we cannot just pick up people and friendship how we want to. Amen. The prayer says, oh, Father God, he's a nice man. Father God, she's a beautiful young lady. Is this who you have for me? Is this friendship ordained by you, put together by you? If not God, scatter them. See, a lot of us, they look good, they sound good, and they got to be from God. But we ain't testing the spirit of the spirit. We're going by flesh and what we see. You can only see through natural eyes, natural things. But if the devil behind that, you need your spiritual eyes open, you can see, okay, okay, devil, I see you get to behind me. So that we do not creep corruption. We cannot go after bad and think bad going to be good. Oh, well, he can change. Oh, she can change. They ain't going to change. They want what you want, which is God and, and everything that God gave, Jesus gave. They change it. The only way they can change is if they desire what you desire. And if you desire a good life and you are already a Christian, then the only thing you could want is what's in God's house. You can't want what's in the devil's house. If they are unsaved, they're in the devil's house. If they save, go get one in the safe house. Eh? Other than that, you are reaping. You are sowing to the flesh and the flesh will reap corruption. Let God change him. You ain't God. Let God give you the friendship that you need. He's going to give it to you. Let's get what God has so that we can stop living a life of failures, loss, disappointment, setbacks, and heartbreaks. Heartbreak after heartbreak. Let's get tired of our heart being broken. Let us get tired of hearing negative words. And let us want that good life. Let us wake up with love, with love in our hearts. And not hate in our hearts. Let us get to a place where we start to sow the seeds with God. Where we bring joy to God's heart. And we bring joy to our lives. And they have to be good seed. Let's go now to Job 4. 
Job 4, read in verse 8. Job 4, read in verse 8. Job 4, 8, ready, read. Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. One more time. Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So if you sow after the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Sin, sowing, wickedness will give you the same. They say plowing, iniquity, and sowing wickedness, you will reap the same. So we cannot be wicked people. We cannot be evil people. It says you're going to reap the same. You're going to reap the same. And so we have to stop living like as though we are the only person on this earth. Nobody else. You only care about yourself. You're not the only person on this earth. And if God say love your neighbor as yourself, then you are commanded to love your neighbor. Get to know who they are. Get to love them. Some of us don't like people in our own homes. They reach in home, you suck your teeth. You pretend you're sleeping. You pretend you're busy. Something's wrong with that picture. We have to get to a place where forgiveness becomes a part of us. When we love God, we will do and keep his commandments. So when we start to change the seeds that we're sowing, then we're going to see a different type of fruit. But we have to make sure change the way we used to talk. The way we used to talk as unbelievers, we cannot com continue talking that way as believers, as children of the Most High God. Jesus didn't speak that way. He didn't talk that way. He did good. Everywhere he went, he preached, he healed, set people free. So let us get to the place where we recognize what seeds we're sowing, what seeds we're putting in the ground, because once they come out of our mouth, they are gone. So we have to cancel them if they're bad seeds, but we have to make sure we're paying attention and we are purpose, purposely sowing with all good intention, good seeds. And before you open your mouth, first thing in the morning, Father God, guide my mouth, please. That the only thing come out of my mouth is what you have to come out. Lord, use me today, but God, please help me to use my time wisely. That I'm sowing good seeds, and I'm not sowing to the flesh, but I am sowing to the spirit. And so we start to now change the way we used to live our lives. One time we never thought about today, we just wake up and went our way. You can't just wake up and go your way. Satan's already, in fact, he wasn't even sleeping. He's already from midnight, between the midnight and 3 a.m., busy using people, spewing curses at us. That's what the witches and the sorcerers do. At night, when demons walk around upon the face of the earth, programming your day programming the world speaking curses over the earth speaking curses in the earth speaking curses in the air and if man is busy sleeping when morning come the whole day is already programmed for evil so only evil can come so how are we spending our nights how are we spending first thing in the morning? You can't sleep from 9 p.m. until 8 a.m. I mean, you could, but you shouldn't. What are you busy doing? How are you controlling and commanding your day? So the things that we used to do on ignorance, we don't do that anymore. When the light comes, we use that light to expel darkness. Keep darkness out. And so as God give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through revelation, let's go ahead and use it. Shut down, devil. You know now that what you speak, you're responsible for. You know now if you speak bad, what is going to happen. You know if you judge, criticize, and condemn people, you know it's going to come back to you. 
You know, if you, if you plow iniquity and sow wickedness, you will reap the same. So when God gives the word, he gives it because there's something in our lives we're doing wrong. And we need to change. We need to stop it. In order for us to get what God has given to us. That good life, that abundant life. So to see different, we have to do different. For us to be able to speak, then we need to know what we're speaking. Let's go to Mark 11. Mark 11, verses 22 and 23. Mark 11, 22 and 23. Ready, read? And Jesus answering said unto them, For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall whosoever shall say and be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he hath shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he say okay he shall have whatsoever he say it he shall have whatsoever he say it. That's the key. Whatever you say, you will have. Whether it's good or bad. God already given a command. God gave a command. Genesis 1. When he spoke to the earth, he said to the earth, let the earth bring forth grass. Let the earth bring forth grass. So that was a command. And he also said, let man have dominion over all the earth. That's a command. So, Jesus now comes in 23 and says, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever, ain't say you got to be saved. He said, whosoever. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he had said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. This is how witches and sorcerers could speak evil and it come to pass. When the man of God and the woman of God are not busy praying, the children of God are not busy praying, praying and speaking blessing. Satan using the wicked man out there to speak wickedness. Because it said, whosoever shall say, and at last, he shall have whatsoever he say it. Because God said to man, have dominion over all the earth. So when we sit back with our mouth closed, Satan is destroying. And when we open up our mouth and only speak death, then we are destroying us. Because it's whosoever shall say, shall say, shall say, they shall have what they say. You shall have what you say, whether it's negative or positive, good or bad, um, um, blessing or cursing, you will have it. It is the word of God. It is a law. It is a law. So when we say, and what we say is good, then we see good come. When we say good, then there's good seed going into good ground, and we'll produce a tree that brings forth much good fruit. So therefore, speak good. Believe for good. Stop the negative. Stop going after people with your words. Yes, you might win that argument, but what all bad seeds you sow for winning that argument? And how much years you will sow that are you going to reap from that? Get enough of that bad talking man. Satan already know how he got you in the past, so he's going to keep using that same, same old dirty trick. 
get wiser than him and stop speaking bad things. I'm down my path, I drive on the street, man, look at these cars flying past, flying past, flying past. If you don't late, you late. If you want to one minute late on our late, and late is late. Late is late. If you one minute late, you late. If you 30 minutes late, you late. If you three hours late, you late. Now what you should have done when you get up and you realize you're going to take that five minutes nap and you went back to sleep or you take that extra minute talking to your friend or you just wasn't paying attention to time and you know you ain't got enough time. Lord, please get me to wake on time, please. Jesus name, amen. I bet you one thing you get to wake on time. So you got to know how to speak. You're driving crazy on the road and speeding around. Only Satan set me up. He set me up and ain't nothing good going to come out of it. So, let's look at the word of God and let's do what he said. He gave us dominion over all the earth. So you have a right to say, life, and you call your name, life of Albania, I speak life to you. From this day forward, you are no longer to tell you out ahead. You will no longer live a small life, but a mega and amazing life unto God. You will no longer be in the middle, but you will be in the upper. So you got to speak life, man. Because why? Death and life is in your tongue. So if you're not speaking, I'm going to get this promotion, I'm getting it this year, you ain't going to come. Because Satan busy saying, one more year in that position, two more years in that position, you'll not come out of that position. He's, he's speaking death. So don't join him. You get up, stop laying down, and demand your morning. Demand your day what you want to see. If you say, Satan, I command you to not speak to me throughout this day, in Jesus' name. And we know that all power and authority has been given to us in Christ. So in Christ, you can speak these things and watch the devil scatter. But it's on us. We sit back and only time... We want to make noise is when the devil jump on us to get us so riled up that only thing we speak is that and our mouth just going and going and louder and louder. Why? The more we speak those things, the more we come into agreement with the spirit of death. The more we speak those things, the more we come for the thief to come to steal, to kill and to destroy. Because God has given man, man, us, dominion. He's given us dominion over the works of his hands. That means everything in this earth is supposed to yield and bow to us. That's the way it's been set up. That when we speak, life happens. Or if we speak the wrong thing, that happens. This is why words are so powerful. Because he said to speak. He's given us that authority to speak. He made the earth, put man in there and say, okay now, this is yours, handle it. That's what he said. So if you're not handling it, devil come, he'll handle it. So we got to get to the place where we recognize it. Look, I'm in control of this, right? And so, oh, you must bow to me. You must listen to me. Let's go back to Genesis 1. 11. Genesis 1, 11. We're just going to read as far as grass. Ready, read? And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Right there. And God said, let the earth bring forth what? Grass. But who did he speak to? The earth. Did he speak to Adam? No. He speak to Eve? No. He spoke to the earth. So how did he speak to the earth thing and the rest? And that means it live in? And it means it could help? Because, let's, go and live, let's read 11, let's go to 12. Just the grass. Ready, read? And the earth brought forth grass. So how the earth brought it forth if you didn't hear God? How could the earth bring forth the grass when God said to earth, oh, earth, go and bring forth grass? If he couldn't hear. Why do you think God said to, to Moses, speak to the rock? Because they could hear. Why? God made them. So they could hear the command of God. When you speak in Christ, they hear it. God Jesus. And so you don't have to say, go outside and say, okay, now, uh, you got some harvest in here. Spit it out. I want it now in Jesus' name. 
He spoke to the earth. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. He gave it a command. Bring forth grass. On the earth brought forth grass. That's why when you speak, it happens. Because God gave us dominion. He gave us dominion. So if you say, oh, I can be late, what's going to happen? You're going to be late. Your mouth is authority. You speak and it happens. Oh, this cancer going to kill you. It ain't going to kill me. Oh, this cancer is going to kill you. It's going to kill you if you say it's going to kill you. We ain't saying that. Get out of my body in the name of Jesus. You're not, you're, you're illegal in my body. God ain't put you in here so Satan, get out in the name of Jesus. You can speak to your body. What did God tell Ezekiel? Can these dry bones live? And what did he say? Speak to the dry bones. And he spoke to who? The dry, not a human being, not living. He spoke to the dry, even though it's all spiritual, he spoke to the dry bones. If your bones dry, speak to them and say live. Reuben was one of the one of the eldest sons of Jacob. Jacob put a curse on him because of what he did. Moses, seeing how small his tribe was, very small tribe, he canceled out that curse and said, Let Reuben live. What the word was he used? Let Reuben live. We got to get to know this word. God said, let the earth. So what are you letting? Death or life? What are you letting? What are you speaking? What are you saying? What are you declaring in other words? What are you decreeing? But the word of God said, the creating thing and it shall be established. And this is the reason why we cannot let fear jump on us. Fear will silence us. And if you're silent, everything moving around you because you're afraid. You're afraid to move, you're afraid to go, you're afraid to open the door, you're afraid to... No, man. God say, one, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Take authority over your mind, which is your soul, and say, no soul. You will not be afraid again in your life. It's on us to do it. It's on us to stop waking out and not seeing nothing happen. That's what Satan wants, man. Let us get to the place where we put God first and he's everything. And once he put us first in every, and, and we actually put him first in everything and we do what he tells us to do, we truly will be like Psalm 1. That tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth fruit in its season. We have seasons. There are time for everything. Let's find out what season we're supposed to be in and let us now move forward in God and so that we get everything that God died for us. To give Jesus died to give us. It says, Whosoever shall say, and they shall have what they say. So get in the habit, say, Okay, God, now nah, I never do this. I ain't sure how to do this. But God, what is it I should be commanding the earth? What is it I should be commanding from my life? What is it I should be speaking? What is it I should be taking control over? Because if you're a negative person, you're always, always um, speaking negative, or if you're a selfish person, it's always about you then that got to get fixed. It has to be fixed. For us to be able to succeed and watch our hands and our lives be prosperous, we have to do God's way. We have to get to the place where we know our God and that we are rewarded for good works. Last one, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Verse 13, Jeremiah 29, 13. Twenty-nine, thirteen, ready to read? And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your hearts. So in order for us to find God when we search for him, what are the condition or the prerequisite? search for God with all our hearts. So we can't give God half our heart. We can't say we searching for him with half of our heart. The word of God says, and you shall find me, God, 
you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. The thing is, Christians don't want to give God all their heart. They want to be one foot in and one foot out. They want to be lukewarm. They don't want correction. They don't want to go through the testing. They don't want to go through the sacrifices. And let me tell you something, life is about sacrifice. To serve God, you have sacrifice. It's all about sacrifice. Sometimes you have to go to sleep. Some day it's gonna be some days when you get four hours sleep. If you really seek in God. There are times when you're going to get five hours sleep. Most of my mornings is five hours sleep. Most of my time is four between four and a half, five hours Monday to Friday. I usually only get four to five hours sleep. Why? Because I'm busy studying and I'm praying. I'm busy spending time with God and I'm busy shutting down Satan's kingdom. And so anytime after two, I am wide awake. Anytime around two, I am wide awake and I am in prayer. I am before God. Anytime after two, nothing else taking that. Nothing else is going to take that time. Definitely not sleep. Definitely. You have to change something. If you're not growing the way you want, not seeing things happen, then we got to speak and do a different thing. Let us really search for God with all of our heart. Let's seek him. This is how we gain knowledge and understanding. Not letting Satan busy us with life and the cares of this world. These things will pass away. And let us change the way we speak to people. And so that we get a different response. People don't run from you and they really listen to you. If we learn to respect all people regardless of age. Regardless of age. Let's respect one another. Oh, I only knew I could be a mom, but that don't mean that you should disrespect them. Yeah. Oh, man, you ain't no company, but you, you cussing them out, man. Come on, you can't live like that. You can't live like you're so in the wrong seas. That profanity and that disrespect must go. That living in pride and arrogance must go. It's from the devil, from his kingdom. It's not from God's kingdom. So we have to learn to do it right so that we get to live a better life. And we speak and, and God answer and we walking with him all day long. And he's given us, shown us visions. And he's, he's speaking to us and he confirmed the word right away. That's the life we're supposed to live. Jesus, God came down in the cool of the day to speak with Adam. In the cool of the day, he came down to speak with Adam. There was a disconnect spiritually when they disobeyed God. Death entered in. We got to keep that out. If we for God, then we have life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so let us hold on to who he is and let us want better so that he can use us more mightily in the earth. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your word this morning. And Lord, we come right now, first of all, repenting. Repenting, Father God, for negative words that has brought many bad fruit and trees and, and grown many Evil trees, Father God, because of the negative words we have spoken, Father God. And Lord, we ask you right now, Father God, as we put your axe to every tree that is, a, that is not of you, every tree that we've planted, Father God, through ignorance that is not of you, Father God, if we have plowed iniquity and sowed wickedness, Lord, we repent. For the word of God said we will reap the same. If we have sowed wickedness, Father God, show us plowed iniquity, show us, Father God, that we may confess them, repent, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we put the axe to every evil tree, every bad tree. And God, let your, your, your axe chop everyone down, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let your consuming fire burn them all to ashes in the name of Jesus. God, that when we speak, let our words bring forth life, bring forth blessing. For your words say blessing and cursing cannot come out the same mouth. Your words say you cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of devil. So we choose to drink from the cup of the Lord this day. And God, if we are unaware or ignorantly drinking from the cup of devils, then God, we need you to give us eyes to see. We'll bring it back to our remembrance, oh God. If, there, if we have arrogance and pride in our hearts, if we have that spirit upon us or in us, I should say, of pride and arrogance, reveal to us, Father God, that we humble ourselves this morning and ask, repent 
If we are disrespectful to our elders or even younger, and we have a mouth ain't fit for the kingdom of God, then God, you need to show us. Humble us. Give us a spirit of humility. And humble us, O oh God. For you say a humble child takes the grace of God. We need correction, and God, as you've given correction, and Father God, let us now, let it allow us to be broken and healed by it, Father God, that we may grow and change and transform. You've given us dominion over the works of your hands, everything in the earth, in the air, and the sea. And God, if we've given over our power to the enemy, to the devil, we repent, Father God. And we take it back and show us how to keep it in the name of Jesus, that when we speak, over the works of your hands, whether it's in the air, in the sea, or in the earth, then God, give us the prayers, but to pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But we speak to the earth now, we command every evil tree to be uprooted from the root, and they leave nothing in the ground that we have spoken of, that, that, uh, that our forefathers placed on us, Father God, through idolatry, in the name of Jesus. O earth, vomit them in the name of Jesus. Give us, Father God, understanding on how to speak. Because Jesus said, whosoever shall say. Whosoever shall say. So teach us your words what to say in the name of Jesus. That we have the good things that we say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We repent of all sins known and unknown. Sitting in the judgment seat, Father God, condemning and criticizing people. On others, God, we repent. Forgive us. Wash us now, Father God, in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse our uh, bloodline on Father's side, Mother's side, and cleanse our blood, Father God. From all sins, all iniquities, Father God, in the name of Jesus. All defilement, all filthiness, all uncleanness, defile and uh, wash us and cleanse us from them all, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, that we stand righteous and pure before you in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.